Hey guys, in this video we're going to put together a quick form and I want to show you how to do a little bit of form validation using just JavaScript. Alright, so we're also going to use Bootstrap just to make things look a little better, but I'm not going to download Bootstrap, I'm actually going to use the CDN, uh, which I don't remember the URL, so we're just going to search Bootstrap CDN. Oh, it is, it's bootstrapcdn.com. Alright, so we're going to grab this link right here to the CSS and let's put that up in the head area. All right, and then we're gonna go to get bootstrap. Let's go to getting started, not getting started, CSS I think, and forms. And then I'm just gonna grab this to start with, whoops. Copy that, and let's put this in the body. Okay, so this is gonna be, I guess, a, a registration form. So I'm gonna get rid of this for attribute in the label, and this will be the name. Okay, and this will be type text. ID is gonna be name. And let's see, I also want to have a name attribute. And the value in this case will also be name. All right, so I'm going to copy this and then we can replace all this stuff here. Okay, so name, next one will be email. We'll change type to email. Actually, I'm going to keep that to text because I want to show you how we can validate an email address without using the, the type email. Okay, we're gonna change the ID and we're also gonna change the name. And then this one here will be password. Okay, type is also gonna be password. And then we want a uh, password confirmation as well, so I'm gonna copy this form group div and we'll say confirm password and for the ID we'll call it password2 along with the name password2 alright so let's take a look at that alright now I'm gonna wrap this in a container Okay, we'll indent this. Okay, so there's our form. Let's put a an H1 at the top here. We'll just say register with us. And let's give this H1 a class of text center. Okay, so there's our form. And we want to make sure we give it an ID as well. So we'll just call it reg form. And then down in the script area, we're going to say document dot get element by ID reg form. And we're going to add an event listener. And let's pass in the event will be a submit. And let's say we'll call the function register and then false. Okay, so then we're going to have function register. All right, and we're going to pass in an event here and then do e dot prevent default okay because we don't want it to actually submit and then for now let's just say console log submitted all right so let's save that and reload uh, let's see document dot get element okay this should be a capital I okay if we submit we get submitted good now we want to catch the uh, the values 
So let's go ahead and create variables for those. So name get element by D name and it's going to be the value that we want. Okay, so we'll copy that. So with the name, we also want the email and we want the password. And let's say password two. Okay, so we have those values. Now, when we submit the form and everything passes, we want it to just give us a message that says um, the user's name and then has submitted with the, whatever the email address is. All right, so what we'll do is so let's put right above the form, we're going to create a div, give it an ID of MSG for message. And let's give it a class um, of alert. All right, now the alert, the, the color class, whether it's alert success or danger for an error, that's going to be dynamic depending on what the message is. So I'm not going to put that class in yet. But what we want to do is go down here and we'll say document. Actually, you know what we'll do is put this, put the message in a variable as well. So we'll say var msg equals document dot get element by d msg. All right, and then down here we'll say msg dot inner HTML. And then we want the name. And then we'll concatenate a string. So we'll say name is registered with email. And then we want to concatenate the email. All right, so let's see how that works. If we submit, actually, we need to fill something out here. We'll say Brad. Okay, so you see we get Brad is registered with the email techguyinfo at gmail.com. So we want to be able to have validation because if we submit, it just says is registered with email and that doesn't make sense. So first thing we'll do is make sure that the required fields are filled out. All right, so we're going to go right here and put in an if statement. So we're going to say if name is equal to nothing or email is equal to nothing or password or password two is equal to nothing. Okay, if that's true, then um, we want an error. So we're going to do msg dot inner HTML and we'll say, please fill out all fields. All right, and then we'll do an else, then this will happen, which is just the, the success message. Okay, so we'll put that in there. So now if we go and we reload and try to submit, we get please fill out all fields, and it should do that as long as any of them aren't filled out. Last one, submit, and that works. All right, so that's the first part of the validation. Now, I also want to add the class. Okay, I want to change the class if this is an error or a success message. So what we can do is use class name. All right, um, let's go here where it would be an error. We'll go right above the inner HTML and do msg dot class name equals. And let's set that to alert and then alert dash, uh, let's see, this is going to be danger. That'll make it red. All right, and then let's copy it. And then in this, when it's successful, we want it to be alert success. Okay, and these are bootstrap classes. So now if we reload, try to submit, you can see now it's red. 
if everything's filled out, submit, now it's green. So let's say we want another rule like um, your name has to be uh, at least three letters or three characters. So we'll go into where the success is, which is this else, and we're going to put another if, if else. Okay, we'll grab the, let's just put a comment here that says success. Okay, we'll cut that and then put that inside the else. And what we want to test here is we want to say if name dot length is uh, less than three, then we'll copy that, paste that in, and then for the message we'll say name must be at least three characters. Okay, so now if we reload, make sure everything's filled out except the name will put two characters submit and you can see we get that error if we have three or more it passes all right so we have two validations we have the required fields and then we have the name uh, characters now we do have an email field so we also want to test for that so let's go into where our success is and we're going to have one more if statement Grab this, okay, put that in the else. And you can see you can go as far as you want as far as the different validations. Now there's a, a lot of different ways to validate if an email address is formatted correctly. Reg regular expressions is one. Um, but we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're just gonna look for the correct characters. So we know an email address has an at symbol at a certain place and we know it has a dot at a certain place. So what we'll do is create a variable, we'll say at POS for at position, and we're going to set that to email dot index of, and then whatever character we want, which in this case is the at symbol. All right, and then we'll have another variable called dot POS for dot position. Okay, I'll set that to email dot, uh, and then we want last index of, and in here we're going to put dot. All right, now for the if statement, it's going to be if at POS is less than one or dot POS. Yeah, dot POS is less than at POS plus two. And then we want to say greater than, wait, no, then we want an or dot POS uh, plus two. And then greater than or equal to the length of the entire thing. So email dot length. Okay, so it's testing to make sure that that at symbol is in the correct position as well as the dot. All right, and then let's go ahead and just grab this. Okay, because if this isn't true, that means the email isn't formatted correctly. So we'll say, please use valid email. All right, so let's go ahead and test this out. So we'll put in a name. For email, let's put in something that isn't an email password submit and oh I gotta remove that T please use valid email so if we say something at something.com and submit and then it works all right, and then the last thing we're going to do here is make sure the passwords match. So we want to go again inside this else, another if statement. Grab that. Okay, and then all we want to do here is say if password is not equal to 
password two. Then we'll grab that. And we're just going to say passwords do not match. All right, so let's try that out. Okay, so make sure everything's good except for the passwords. They're not going to match. So we'll do 111, 112. Submit. Passwords don't match. Let's change that to match and submit. And it works. All right, so we now have a form that has quite a bit of validation. And we didn't use jQuery or any kind of validation library. It's just straight up JavaScript. All right, so we're going to stop here, and I'll see you in the next video.